when you fight Mother Nature and you don't you don't do it right, it, it Mother Nature is going to win every time. It sounded like a freight train. It was literally like a freight train, and it didn't stop. As Hurricane Ian made landfall on Florida's west coast, this lake was raging. Anthony Grande helplessly watched on from his backyard. It looked like an ocean. It really, it looked like it was five, five foot waves out here. Roughly 20 miles northeast of hard hit downtown Fort Myers. It didn't look real. It looked like something out of a, out of a science fiction movie. We, we got 100 plus mile an hour winds up to a gust of over 150 miles an hour. And it lasted literally for eight to 10 hours. And despite the winds and flooding rains, did you sustain a lot of damage? We got uh, very little damage, down trees, a rip on the lanai screen, and uh, that's it. At Babcock Ranch. Through a cat four hurricane, the lights never went out. But we never lost power, we never lost internet, we never lost water. Sid Kitson, a retired professional football player, is the developer of the 1,800-acre community. What I'd really like to do is get off the grid almost completely. That he proudly calls America's first sustainable solar power town. I think this is the future uh, for development, not just here, but, but around the country. Why don't we see more communities like this? That's a great question. Um, maybe because there wasn't a need uh, before. This is a sea of solar panels. They stretch for as far as the eye can see, nearly 700,000 of them, creating enough clean energy to power nearly 30,000 homes. The solar facility and battery storage system, which is tied to the grid and is owned by Florida Power and Light, not only powers the growing community of nearly 2,000 homes, but also feeds the region. An FPNL spokesperson told us it was not the solar power generation that kept the lights on for this storm, but the hardened grid. Kitson says Hurricane Ian's winds didn't dislodge a single solar panel. We're not going to see any power lines anywhere, are we? No power lines. Where are they? Underground. You're walking on top of them. Kitson splits his time between Babcock Ranch and Palm Beach County. He collaborated with FPNL to bring his idea to life, and he credits the utility with hardening its infrastructure in and around the community to survive a storm like Ian. With a Category 4 hurricane sitting on top of us for eight to 10 hours, and uh, life went back to normal literally within a day. But it's not just electricity that Kitson says powered the community through the storm. Babcock Ranch sits 30 feet above sea level. Kitson credits a well-designed water management system with preventing flooding, as well as native plants made for these types of events. And it has its own hardened water utility. Homes here range from 200,000 to over a million dollars, and once completed, will nearly have as many homes as Palm Beach Gardens. So there needs to be a lot of thought that goes into how to build, if we're gonna be along the coast, in, in a way that is, is, is resilient. Could you build something like this in Palm Beach County or along the Treasure Coast? I, I, I think you absolutely could. And you know, if the land was available. I think the science is there. I think we, we know, we've been warned uh, over the last 20 years what, what it was gonna be like, and here we are. Grande told me weathering previous hurricanes drove him to make the move to Babcock Ranch in 2019 and a change towards greater sustainability. We take in the sun during the day and we use our power, stored power, for our electricity needs at night. It, it just doesn't make any sense to rebuild the same way every time, knowing that the next time a storm comes by, we end up in the same place.